welcome on behalf of us. It takes a mental strength and, uh, and uh, justification and uh, strong will to make, make such a project. And I am proud to present my co-presenter Nora Lahde from Trafi Traffic Labs, uh, Chief Advisor Nora Lahde. Thank you for these kind words. Uh, hello everyone, also from my part. So um, we are really thrilled to explain uh, what's going to happen <laughs> during these uh, 15 minutes. But first of all, Mika Huhtamäki, who is Vice President in uh, Tilajavastu. So yes, uh, we are going to go through uh, our case uh, briefly. And I hope to continue the discussion after this because I uh, only a limited time here. So first of all, the introduction of our organizations as we are two representatives here from different organizations. Then uh, briefly the target of our pilot starting point. Then uh, the short demo overview. What is it? Uh, and then the needs, challenges, uh, technology, user experience, etc and then the future, so the next steps. So first of all, um, as Mika had mentioned, I'm working in the Finnish Transport Safety Agency, which is a regulatory authority under the Ministry of Transport and Communications. Uh, we are responsible of all the transport modes, so air, road, rail and sea, but in the core of there is data. Data is all actually um, also in the strategic point of view uh, one, one transport mode as uh, well and the importance of that transport mode will rise and that is also about the, my data as well. Uh, here are some numbers just to show like uh, what kind of uh, licenses and actually how many licenses, certificates uh, we approve and uh, make sure that the transport system uh, is functioning safely, environmentally friendly and uh, how we enable also the development of, of this. So these are the backbone of, of our organization. And uh, Suomen Tilaivastu OY is a Finnish-based company uh, that is not right now that well known here, but we have more than 62,000 customers. Uh, our business is about collecting data about companies, mainly about construction companies, about people, employees, about construction sites, and what we do, we find the data for the purpose of decision making for the purpose of following the regulation and providing most of the data for free. But at the same time, we are an independent company that has to make the money out of the customers. So, uh, in a way, we are already in the position, we are sharing a lot of information uh, about, the, for example, about the Finnish uh, buyer's obligation law. We provide more than 8 million reports for the buyers about the companies and their backgrounds, if they have paid taxes and so on. We have more than 340,000 employees and cars for the employees uh, with the chip so that the information about the people can be accessed electronically to different systems. We have 80, more than 80 partners who are using it in different areas of the businesses. Uh, then we have title register, uh, I would say a competence registry where we combine the background information of the skillful employees, their certifications and training information and then deliver that data to the actual purpose uh, of, of following the guidelines of, of industrial sites or construction sites and showing that people can do what they're supposed to do. Total, we have more than 420,000 people in Finland, and if we take our cooperation in Sweden, we have more than a million identities in our databases. And uh, that leads into the uh, <coughs> idea that we already act in an area where personal data is important, but it's limited by the law, and we want to make this free and open and uh, right kind of uh, approach so that people know what data they have and they can actually have a say of how we share the data. <clears throat> and we can get to the final starting points, Nora can start from the Travis point of view. Yes, so uh, what are the starting points? In the government point of view, this started already in 2014 from the initiative of the Ministry of Transport and Communications with the emphasis and interest um, 
how to have new services and personalized services uh, for use. So creating this digital business environment is the starting point for new kind of um, ideas, thoughts and uh, yes, innovations. And the starting point from our point of view was actually the cooperation uh, we met one year ago actually in the My Data conference where uh, the My Data concept was for me quite kind of new but we started to discuss the opportunities and, uh, and then we, we noticed that uh, we both have uh, some data there uh, and both of the organizations and uh, in order to digitalize some processes, we can actually have some uh, added value. So actually it's about the cooperation, the starting point. And then um, ap apart from the uh, releases about the 2014 publication, but also the act on transport services is encouraging for opening the interfaces and uh, uh, really to create the digital services. And actually, at uh, the 1st of July, uh, if you are aware of the uh, taxi uh, the legislation about, for example, the uh, taxi service uh, and the opening of the taxi service legislation, that has uh, kind of got quite much media attention. But also, at the same time, uh, there was this uh, uh, emphasis for the opening the opportunities for the personal data as well. So it was the both of them actually the 1st of July, so a little bit more than one, one month ago, but what happened there in the legislation point of view. But yeah, you can continue with the Gilaiva School. Okay, as Snor mentioned, we actually met last year and started the discussions under the research project Trustnet, where we both are, and there are a lot of other Finnish entities as well. And uh, during the three years what Dilan School has been following this event, we have been constantly researching that what would be the best way to approach this. 2016 was the first time when I was here and I was just learning and listening yet. And last year we started to investigate the problem. Our problem at Dilan School is that we have more than 40 parties who provide us information. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a huge amount of people in our databases. We collect the data from different sources, uh, and there is an agreement related to that collection process. And then we distribute that data for our partners or straight to our customers. Again, we have agreements. And this simple image just shows the main chain of agreements and uh, what is the relationship of the people who are involved. Basically, uh, they do not have a say in the process. Of course, our process is related to the law, but at the same time, our process is limited by the law because the data cannot be used on other purposes so freely, and people cannot use the data for their own ideas, or the companies cannot use the data freely for other ideas. And uh, this means that we want to turn this other way around. We want to make it so that, uh, first of all, people know where the data goes, and on the other hand, if there is a good use for the data, parties who want to use the data can ask from the people. And uh, we want to make this more flexible uh, and uh, to follow the guidelines, the principles of my data. But also what we have seen is that we are not speaking about just a static identity, but we have a huge amount of data streams that we have to think about. So our approach is coming from a little bit different point of view, which I'm going to explain later on further. But this was the starting point, the reasoning, and obviously traffic, they are sharing the same issue. They have more information than we have, but we both know the limitation of GDPR. We know that the future needs more data. GDPR tries to limit it, so we want to find the golden spot where the data can be used, but in a moral right way, and uh, then we can fuel the future businesses and the future needs of the data for the businesses. So let's continue with the pilot overview. So in a, in a nutshell, what is going to happen during the pilot? There are three points there which are, are crucial there. So first of all, the consent. The pilot is going to start in the construction site. So um, 
First of all, you need the consent of the drivers. So the consent that uh, you are uh, willing to share your data in the in the service. Uh, and after that, uh, it's it's possible to uh, have access to this uh, Montiadot, which uh, Mika will uh, show later. So after the consent, that is okay. Uh, is the validation. So at the construction site where you have to validate yourself, so to show that uh, you are qualified to uh, go and enter to the construction site. So you need both the driving license and uh, at, at the moment you need the driving license and the professor qualifications. So during the uh, pilot we digitalize it. So you don't have, you don't need these uh, physical cards which is actually slower in the process, so it's also uh, faster in the process and have a smoother uh, service. But also, uh, at the same time, uh, it's giving the access for the version uh, to first to give the consent and also to see where is your data and where you give uh, the uh, consent for that. So we, Trafi, our role is uh, mostly the API provider, so the um, access to the driver license uh, data and the qualifications data. And uh, Tilaya Vasu in this pilot is the operator to integrate uh, the information uh, with our information during that, that pilot. It doesn't mean that uh, our uh, data will be deleted from uh, the traffic uh, registers as we have the authority, authority um, obligations, but during the pilot we give the access for a certain period for that uh, information. And the third part is the application. So that is actually also the interesting part. So what else we can do? So, so when we think about the person, uh, it is important to oh, only five, okay. So for the person, um, it is important to have well smooth, efficient. Uh, who wouldn't like to have an efficient uh, service and uh, with less hassle with the uh, paper documents? So the future uh, is up to us, up to all, up to all of us. Like uh, how to really have the better service. Okay, if we get forward, idea is that we want to test, first of all, this in a real environment. We are speaking about the whole chain of having users involved, having the data source traffic involved, having an operator involved, having a real customer at the end who is using the data real time. And uh, I think that the challenge is not the technology, there are limitations, but the challenge what we are facing here is the reality with the people, how they understand this. Uh, do we have a terminology? <laughs> do they adapt to the idea? And uh, in pilot, it starts with the idea that somehow users give a permission for accessing their driver's license and professional driving information. For example, can they drive a huge truck with a poison stored in the truck and stuff like that important stuff that needs to be monitored also in real time, every day. Then that information, it, it will be delivered to, through our title register. idea is that the driver gives a permission to title register to get the information about them and combine that information with their identity and all the other skill information what we have. And then we share that to the actual end sites or and industrial sites, construction sites, where the information is needed. Also, this gives an opportunity for the logistic company to follow every day that the driver's license and the required skills are in place, because driver's license is not a static piece of information. It's a flow. Every single day, a police uh, can take it away. So, for the industrial safety point of view, I mean, the professional tra transportation point of view, this needs to be followed every day. And this gives a legitimate way to do it nicely with permission of the driver. Uh, when we started this creation of this pilot, we started from the PIMS principles. So these are uh, in order of the importance. And idea being that we want to follow the principles. That's the guideline. And then we need to make it so that people who actually use it understand what we are doing. So that's the challenge, how we translate the principles into the real life. Then, uh, second comes to the user experience, and then the use case and the business case. Meaning that we have to translate it into a form that everyone can understand, and it makes sense business-wise. It doesn't need to make money, it's not about that, but it needs to have real need in real life. And third, it comes to the technology. 
and what technology and parts of the technology we are using. And we have been facing the reality, as I mentioned earlier, that we are not speaking about static pieces of information or identity. We are rather speaking about streams, data streams, and, and we are tweaking a little bit the approach of, of for example, solving how it works, but still counting on the critical things, DIDs and later. And now let's head to the lessons what we have learned so far. Okay, some of the lessons have uh, already been there, so one of the technology readiness, um, so uh, how uh, the sovereign, what we are going to use, uh, is going to fit to this picture. By far uh, we have been uh, with, without the sovereign, but the next step is to use that. And, and first of all, we also thought um, that should we use the real material, so like the real data of the driver's license, etc., or should we use the test material? But then we came came to the conclusion that it's uh, that it's more useful to have the real real data. So that was the like some uh, thoughts at the first point. And then the vocabulary, so the terms. Uh, the new definitions are something what needs to be think, and also their roles, like what, what and who is doing that. This is this is something uh, what is not perhaps uh, the first uh, stage, something which is already defined. So we need to think it together. Um, and by far we have got quite uh, good uh, communications, and as we both are from uh, Pohjanmaa, which. Uh, came uh, yesterday when we uh, were rehearsing this uh, presentation. So yes, I think there is uh, this encouraging uh, environment, environment for the communications uh, on the future as well. Made for the communication. <laughs> exactly, exactly. If you are from Finland, you know what we are talking about, the personalities. Um, so yes, the synergies, uh, but also the challenges are being uh, solved together. But in the core is the open culture for exper experimentations. So. Uh, if we don't test this, we never know it. So from the research, uh, we went quite straight to the real pilot. Okay, and the third one, I already mentioned that this is still a young concept and uh, difficult to communicate. And we still are facing the real life needs for what, uh, actually understanding the real life needs, what the my data could be. And that's why uh, we have been learning that it's not straightforward as it might sound first, and uh, I think that we are facing those problems and solving those problems, and hopefully hopefully we get something real that we can actually adapt next year to the lessons, and in the future, actually adapting the lessons to the future, and if Nora can briefly explain that, yeah, we're running out of time. Yeah, so okay, so. I think we, we said most of the things already, but yeah, the new authority is more about enabling, so from the uh, basic elements to the uh, cooperation with different organizations, so the new authority is applying these, uh, what is what is there already, uh, opening the interfaces and putting these standards which are um, needed. But uh, in the focus there is this cooperation which is actually business driven, so that, that is the idea also about the traffic lab which was in the first, the first slide, so this wouldn't uh, be there uh, without the initiative of the other school. Thank you. And uh, what, how we see the future, we see that uh, we need operators that can actually facilitate the existing data sources into the my data world easily. And uh, seeing that the operator is the one that is actually issuing the tools for for all the needs, starting from the wallet, wallets, and uh, and uh, establishing this network with the other players who are doing the same thing. Uh, but the core being that operator has to take care of the parties who are in the network and the networking and the consents, but everything else happens from peer to peer. So basically, we are not speaking about uh, the data storing in the operator level and respecting the my data way of working in that sense, even though we are working on streams instead of these kind of static identities you are storing in the wallet. <laughs> You want to show the demo? Yes, I can show it just briefly. Quick. And you can actually Very quickly. Actually, I wrote the link while Nor was speaking. You can see this also in Finnish and English. The slash EN version is, is the English one. You can download the presentation and all. And, uh, <laughs> what you get is the first page, all the presentations, and there is a link to the demo. We can go briefly. Uh, you don't need to have actual bank, bank IDs to get in. But let's say I take an order now. There is the 
explanation, as I was telling that we need to explain to the people a little bit about the concept when they get in, and then you get to the wallet. I can discuss later or after this what kind of decisions we have made, but right now you already get this identity from Nordea because we logged in as an Nordea and Volti card, and you have an offer. Uh, Trapi is offering an access to your own data, to your driver's license. You can see it here a little bit. You can add it to the wallet. Now it's in the wallet. Now, once we wait a little bit, I guess that we are getting our first request. Yeah, here it is. So the was to an actually the uh, title registry is asking an access for the purpose of use the title registry in the construction sites. You can see what you're sharing, you share the whole package. And it's here. And now you can see the same here things here, but once we go to the shares, you can see that you have shared something with the us too, and you can see that what you have said. And obviously, you can see it here from here, but you have a right to remove the share. That's pretty much the demo part of it, and uh, feel free to play with it and uh, think about it. And uh, I think that this is one of the first concepts where we actually test with people how it works. Thank you for listening, thank you for sharing our presentation, and uh, if you have any questions, feel, feel free to ask from both of us.